This event's been organised by Museum Development Northwest with Axis Web, and I want to start really by thanking my colleague Alex Bird, who you'll meet today, um, and also thanks so much to Sheila McGregor, Director of Axis. Together they've put together what I think is going to be a really creative and constructive and informative day. I mean, those three elements are really key. Um, Thanks too also to the artists Alana and Helen who are joining us and who you will be hearing from later. Ever since the Arts Council took on responsibility for museums, I've wanted to do an event such as this to start, to start, start a dialogue but also to strengthen the dialogue between artists and museums. And I've wanted to do this for a number of reasons. And so it was fantastic to be able to work with Axis to make it happen. Because when I first started working with Sheila, we had a very small team and we knew we really, really wanted to do it. And we just didn't have the resources and then realised Axis are absolutely the right people to connect with. Um, but as I said, there are a number of reasons why this is really important. And I want to sort of share, them, share this with you today. So there's a sense of where it goes from here. It's not just nice to do, it's really crucial. Um, as I said, I want to start or to strengthen the culture shift so that museums can confidently work in really interesting and exploratory partnerships with artists. Not just people, there's, there is a lot of expertise and there's a lot of practice and I'm by no means saying that that hasn't been happening for years, but I think there's a now a real opportunity to make a step change and to thinking more holistically about how artists can bring new ideas, fresh insights, and new ways of engaging with audiences into the whole, the whole of an organisation. Today we're particularly concentrating on collections, but I do want you to think more broadly in terms of the relationship between a whole organisation and different creative practitioners. I think there's a real advantage for artists to think about museums and museum collections as extraordinary resources and context for their work. And not just the objects, actually, the people within them. And that's something else I want you to think about today. Museums aren't just objects. They're objects plus people plus buildings. And the people, the experts within museums, can be remarkable resources as well. Um, I also think very, very strongly, something I suppose I've personally been driven by, is how artists can provide new ways for audiences to connect, connect with our organisations. I mean, just today on the radio, artists were working on the Today programme on Radio 4 and caused all sorts of consternation. I think it's not just seeing that in a slightly cliched way of artists causing disruption. Artists can cause wonder. <laughs> Astonishment, surprise, familiarity, seeing something familiar from a different perspective, discovering something that had been hitherto completely overlooked, something very mundane and small. So I think there are lots of ways in which that exploration of artists and totality, sorry, exploration of museums by artists can be very valuable for them in terms of their own practice. Um, I think as I said at the beginning, there's a very practical reason for today. And this isn't something we want to sort of rush into or feel that there's a sort of um, helter-skelter towards funding, but a way of thinking differently about um, working, trying to access resources from the Arts Council. I do think that the museums need to be able to get into the Arts Council mindset to be able to better access the fund through grants for the arts um, and more successfully get resources to fund innovative work with artists. Personally, we tried to get funding from Museum Development for from grants for the arts and we were <laughs> knocked back a couple of times and it was really difficult and I was thinking, hello, I used to work for the Arts Council, what am I doing wrong? This is really, really not what's supposed to be happening. But actually, it was to do with prioritising excellence, prioritising innovation, and knowing exactly who you wanted to work with and why. And putting that first was quite different 
in the context of working in a museum. Normally what you put first is what you expect to happen as a result or who you want to engage with as a result of it. But stepping right back from that and thinking, no, we want to work with that person for this reason because they're brilliant and they will make us brilliant. I mean, I'm simplifying and slightly exaggerating to make the point. But that is a bit of a shift. And also in terms of resources, within museum development funds, we have the Sustainable Improvement Fund. And that, for instance, has very recently given support to the Williamson Art Gallery in Birkenhead. They said, we want to have money because we want to go out to tender to get an artist to do this, and we want it all done by the end of April. And we said, well, we're not going to give you money for that. What we will do is we'll give you some money to work with an independent curator to really think about the sort of opportunities that you've got and think about the sort of artists who would love those opportunities. And you're going to spend a little bit of time thinking about that before you do anything. And that will be, we hope, extremely, extremely significant in a couple of ways. We're all so busy, we've run out of space to think. And th space to think creatively. If you're up to here with problems and cuts, to think creatively and differently about your own organisation does take a bit of time and so have some additional resource and capacity in that respect can be very important. So that's why we opened that, we sort of, we supported that particular museum to think differently and we hope that will end up being a more productive um, process. So just to sum up really, I've got four things to share about today. I think it's about unlocking, unlocking ideas, unlocking collections, unlocking creativity and unlocking engagement. Today is going to be creative. Sheila and the artists are going to get you doing all sorts of things. To unlock the sort of thinking in our own minds about what we feel about museum collections. It's about relationships. It's about the relationships between you all. I hope you'll all meet people you haven't met before, share experience, share expertise, because we also recognise, and Sheila was very good in reminding me of this, how much, how much expertise we already have here now. So don't lose the opportunity to talk to people and find out what other people know, and so on and so forth. Really seize that. Um, it's also about the relationships between people and objects, and that will be something that Sheila explores, I think, in, in um, an activity. Um, it's about sharing, as I've said, lots of sharing, so please feel free, don't be shy. And resources. You've got an information pack which Sheila and her team have prepared with all sorts of things, with, including reading lists. They've brought along material for you to have a look at, some of which, most of which you can take away, but not the two lonely copies <laughs> of the engaged publication about working with artists. So you can have a look at those and we'll work out a way of whether it's possible to get more of those. Um, resources in terms of please talk to Alex or myself about Museum Development Northwest funding. We don't have lots of money. We have small amounts of money that can make a small diff well, no, actually make a big difference by doing a small thing. Um, grants for the arts. You will hear from the Arts Council later today, so feel free to talk to them. They, I don't know, they, are the Arts Council people here now? Not yet. No, no, no. Okay, well, I'll say... For, when the Grants for the Arts people have spoken and I've been there, they will tell you the process. It's quite difficult to have a bit of a sort of discussion about what if and what if and what da, 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 da. It's a bit like, this is how we work. So you have to kind of share. If any of you in the room have had successful Grants for the Arts bids, how did it work for you? How did you find the artist that, et cetera, et cetera, really, really capitalise on it? How did you make it work? Because I think it's a bit of a challenge. Um, but it's money that you, you know, is owing to you, <laughs> is owing to the creative and cultural and heritage sector. Um, finally, in terms of resources, if you want to keep in touch with Museum Development Northwest, and that isn't really a question, that's a statement, you need to keep in touch with Museum Development Northwest. And Alex is the key to all of this. Particularly, he will tell you how to sign up to our blog and our website. We don't send out paper things at all anymore. We have a blog, we have a website which develops and changes and gets updated a lot. It's not as brilliant as it should be, but it will be getting a lot better soon. It's not bad, but it's the place to go to find out what we're doing. It's the place to go also to find out who is working for Museum Development Northwest. We have two new members of staff, Museum Development Officers, one for the north of the region, one for the south. 
plus Alex, who works on these um, workforce development and entrepreneurial development, all sorts of things, plus another colleague who is concerned with environmental issues. So there are four of us, four of them. And you'll find out about all that whole team. And they are there for you as well. That's the crucial thing in terms of brokering relationships, signposting you to resources, helping support and nurture opportunities. So I've spoken enough because today's absolutely not about boring things. <laughs> and, uh, it's to do with um, really, I'll hand over now to Sheila.